All right, hello, good people, wherever you are. Welcome to my channel. On sports topic today, I'm gonna be talking about the NBA. Well, not the NBA. Well, yeah, I'm gonna be talking about NBA. NBA. But it's did on for show that talk about the NBA. I don't know if you all seen it or not, but I just now was watching YouTube and I've seen the up uh, the new undisputed with the star Skip Bayless and his sidekicks. This time. Instead of one Shannon Sharp, they pulled three Shannon Sharps. I'm going to say that again. Instead of one Shannon Sharp, it's three Shannon Sharps. And if I'm saying that, you know when it comes to LeBron James, if you've been watching Undisputed, you know how Shannon Sharp prays LeBron James to the heaven as if he's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. So, the three new undisputed co-hosts did just like Shannon Sharp, praising them to the high heavens, praising them to the heavens, and giving, just like Shannon too, just like Shannon Sharp, giving him a ton of excuses, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today, the excuses that they love to keep pulling out their butt. For their king. They love to pull those excuses out there, but the excuse number one. We hear this all the time when it's coming to Denver. Every time we hear a playoff game, you never hear nothing in the regular season. At least I don't. I don't hear no complaints in the regular season. But when it's time for playoff, they always some some announcer always say, they in the mile high city. So they was tired. They was tired. Okay, I'm going to say this. Look, if an NBA player has been playing in the NBA for at least five years, you have been to the Mile High City at least. It may be higher, but I'm just going to go with the low number. You've been there at least ten times. You've been there I mean, in those five years. Those five years. At least 10 times. I better say, you probably played two games at home and two games in Denver. I can be wrong, but I'm just, you know, I'm just giving out an estimate. At least two years. So, in those years, in those years, even if you played five times, come on, the human body does adapt. They never talk about that. I can see if you go to uh, Denver one time, okay, the altitude may affect you. But when you go there at least five times a year, and I, and, I, and, I, and I took it to the extreme. I'm thinking about one game. No, not one game. You may be in Denver for three days, walking around, scratching your butt. So, I'm, so it's more than uh, ten times a year. I'm just, I just think, I, I just thought about the actual game. You've been there ten times. No, when you, go, when um athletes go to a city, they may spend, they may be there for two days, at least two days. So you've been there for about at least twenty times, twenty times. So I don't want to hear an excuse, but they in the mile high city. You've been there at least twenty times. You played your game. That's one day. And you've been there for about two days. Never two days. So you've been there for about three days. So I can I can increase my number even more. In five years, you've been there at least over 20 times. So no excuses about you in the Mile House City. And then plus with the Mile House City, it's not like you gotta get on a uh, commercial plane. Ain't like you gotta stand. You get yourself checked in with your luggage and then make sure you don't have no illegal contraband. No, you got a private jet. So you just walk onto the jet, take the plane, get off the jet, walk around for two days or so, play the game, go to sleep, and get back on the jet with no hassle. So your body is fully rested. And then, and then, I can even take it further. When you get to Denver, if you have to play Denver that same day, at least you're going to be in the city for a good 
five hours or more. So don't make the excuse as if you just now jumped off the plane, ran to the stadium, and started playing a game. Your body gets time to acclimate to acclimate to the conditions. You've been born on planet Earth. We're not out there in the ionosphere where the oxygen is super low. You can't breathe in the ionosphere. No, you're still on the planet Earth with a breathable atmosphere or you're on a planet that you birth so your body can adjust to different terrains on the planet Earth. You never take it that far. Then the next one, another thing they kind of complain about. It's a, oh, see, I remember from my, the station that I used to love, Chronicles of Judah. He don't do videos anymore, but he made a little, he made a little, uh, except that I always laugh about. You remember when LeBron James was in his heyday, when he was at the prime, he said like, he liked to say, LeBron James in the Eastern Conference, where it was weaker when he was playing, LeBron James can take five cans of paint <laughs> to the playoffs. So basically, the announcers were saying the same thing. Yeah, look at these. He had new players. New players, and he took those five cans of paint to the playoffs. See, he always get the credit for that. When it's something good, he always get the credit. And then, someone, want Shannon, when Shannon will be there, he always got to pull Michael Jordan out of his butt to make a comparison. These three Shannon clones, one of them had to pull Michael Jordan out of the butt and talk about, yeah, see, Michael Jordan could never do this. He could never have a new host of cast in the midseason and take them to the playoffs. But they never, but they won't admit to this. Hey, 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 the Chicago Bulls when Jordan was playing, there was a full team player like a team from game one to game 82. LeBron James, as you saw many, many years, even when he was at his heyday. From what I've seen, most players can stand being with him for about, you know, three years or so. Then after that, we got to change it up in midseason and acquire new talent. So don't go putting Jordan down. I, I'm not a Jordan uh, lover. I'm just trying, because I did watch Chicago Bulls. Don't go putting Jordan down. Compare him to Shannon saying Jordan never took uh, uh, mid-season players to the playoff. He shouldn't have to. He shouldn't have to. But LeBron James, as you all know, every season, every season, we got to get help for LeBron. Let's trade. Let's trade. Let's get help for LeBron. At least when Jordan was playing with the Chicago Bulls, at least when Larry Bird was playing for the Boston Celtics, at least when Magic Johnson was playing, even Dr. J and Tim Duncan, and, and even with the San Antonio Spurs, I never ever heard San Antonio talking about the midseason trades. I, when Shaq and Kobe was playing, for the most part, I never heard about, hey, we got to get new players in the midseason to help LeBron out. I never heard that. Even when Alva Iverson had that one-year flash in Philadelphia, he never said, hey, it's midseason, things not going well, we got to get new help for our star. The only person from what I know in my recollection who always needs some midseason conversion is the love of their life. He always need some mid-season help. And then the next thing, I have to look on it, I have to do research on the internet for this. Hold on, people. Let me do my research on the internet. Because when it comes to three-point shooting, there was companions. Oh, don't expect, yeah, of course LeBron going to shoot the way he shoot. Don't be expecting him to shoot like Steph Curry. Curry. So let me do my little research on NBA, NBA, top 10 three-point shooters. Now, cause I, got, I wanna say something about this. Let's see. All right, all, let me go down the list. NBA 2020, three-point stats. I wanna see three-point shooters if it'll show me. Top 
10 best three point shooters in NBA history. Okay, that's in history. Okay, I'm gonna put the year on there. So I'm gonna type in NBA top three three point shooters 20. Yeah, that is 2023. Let's see what it gives. Let me do my research. Okay, I hope I can find it. Best three point shooters in 2023. So let's see. Oh, here we go. I see. All right, let me see. All right, Clay Thompson. I got him at the top, so I guess he's number one. Bobby held Stephen Curry number three. So when they made the comparison, hey, the Brian Steph Curry. So Steph Curry, according to 2023 stats, is uh number three. So I'm going down. I want to see number ten. Let me see three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. So number ten is Anthony Edwards, if I'm correct. So when they make the comparisons, they always like to com make compare uh, LeBron to the top three-point shooters. I'm gonna compare him to the tenth one, LeBron James. Now let me show. And if it doesn't show the stats, hold on. Let me see the percentage. I don't know if it shows the percentage. Three-point percentage. Oh yes, here it is. Anthony Edwards. His three points percentage is field goal percentage 36 and 9 attempts. LeBron James can't even make that. Let me see LeBron James three point shooting. I'm gonna type that in. LeBron James. LeBron James. Let's, what, what was his penalty? So Anthony Edwards as the tip number 10. He made. Let me see. Okay, I guess I may stop. I'm having trouble with my little. Uh, LeBron James, James, three-point shooting, 2023, three-pointers, three-point percentage, 2023, okay, all right, he made a measly 32.1 so don't go comparing him to Stutz Curry. Compare him to the number 10 three-point shooter. Anthony Edwards. He can't even make that mount. And as you know, he loved to jack him up. Skip Better said something important. He said, LeBron James was the one player in those playoffs who shot 0% in his last 23-point attempt shot. There was one more thing I want to go over, but it slips my mind. So I talked about uh, comparing to Jordan, that Mile High City, Steph Curry three-point shooting, and they make excuses for it, just like Shannon. He's only 38. He can't move the way he moved. He's 38. He can't slash the way he slashed. Because one thing Skip Sparrow said that I know about LeBron James, which makes me boring. But to me, I find boring. Skip Bayless loved to say this. LeBron James scared to shoot free throws in the fourth quarter. He's scared. But to help to, to at least get a chance to get the basket, all he got to do is put his head down and bowl his way to the basket. That's what Skip loved to say. Put your head down. We heard that many before when, he, when we used to be talking about centers in the NBA. Like, shit, put your head down and knock the people over like bowling pins and get to the basket. That's LeBron James from what I see. I know he got a slight jump shot, but his number one move, put his head down and knock the people over like bowling pins and get to the basket. Try to get to the basket, try to make a basket. You either make it or you go to the free throw line. But as Skip loved to say, the fourth quarter, LeBron James is a pathetic free throw shooter. I, I think um, his regular season, the first three quarter, for the regular season, I didn't check that out, but I think he scored the low 70 percentiles. That was his yearly thing, low 70 percentiles. According to Skip, when it's fourth quarter, when it's money time, he become a lowly 60% three-point shooter. But that's it, my good people. I just want to talk about uh the new Shannon Sharp clones 
that I saw, if they regular guests, we know those three, when it comes to LeBron James, they're going to give a lot of excuses. He's 38 years old, so you can't expect to move the way he is, but he still scores 29 points a game. He's an MVP candidate. Thank you for stopping by. Give you an impact on what you think of the new three Shannon Sharp clones. Next time, peace.